I think this plan uh, will help the most vulnerable by a lot because number one, we're going to try and pay off the backlog of bills. So that's what the federal lawsuit that they just had in court last week was regarding. And so we are going to bond out $4.4 billion worth of money to try to pay off some of the backlog of bill. $2 billion of that will be Medicaid bills because of the lawsuit, the doctors, hospitals, and the MCOs have filed a lawsuit because they have fronted $2 billion to all those different groups, and we need to pay them back. They're about five months behind in paying all those different groups. So that's one case that we can help them. Another way in this compromised budget is to move the, restore the child care back up to 185% of poverty. That helps a lot of women with children be able to get back to work because then they can afford child care, and that improves the economy and is very helpful to women and families. Another is that we're going to fund a lot of groups that uh, we had a lot of complaints over that weren't getting funded. And uh, some of those were Teen Reach, uh, the Autism Project. And then also um, they're going to move forward with something that's extremely important is the $35 million they're going to give towards direct care workers. And those are the people that are with all of our disabled people, long-term care people that need help in group homes and in different places. Social services and healthcare provide a lot of jobs, thousands of jobs through the state. Uh, what I was talking about before, direct care workers, there's thousands of those people and most of those jobs are held by women. And those, a lot of them are women, single family women with children, so that's very, very important. A lot of the, um, also how it will affect is jobs with um, all the social service agencies. There's thousands of social service agencies through Illinois, especially for DD, for um, children that are disabled. Um, like I mentioned, Ray Graham, Easter Seals, great people like that. They employ thousands of people, and a lot of those people are women. So it definitely affects the women in our state. And um, there's a lot of other things, domestic violence. Uh, you're helping women by, in the budget, we have $18.6 million for domestic violence. Just in this last three-week period since we left Springfield, there have been three women murdered, and one of them our own employee for the state of Illinois. So those are extremely important issues. There are issues about fragile populations, but people forget that those are jobs are part of the backbone of the state of Illinois. We spend $22 billion a year on Medicaid. In Illinois, we have uh, we fund over 3.2 million people in Medicaid. One out of every four people in Illinois is on Medicaid. So think of all the services we're giving to those people, and those services are all providing jobs for people throughout Illinois. Well, hopefully, we'll have more accountability within our budget to not end up in this same situation again. The state of Illinois has now gone over 700 days without a budget. That is just totally unacceptable. It's unacceptable by the taxpayers, by the families that live in Illinois, by the businesses that are here. And so this budget now has to show that we are strong on getting our state back into a state that is a viable state. We don't want to have to worry about what S&P or Moody's is going to say about our bond rating. We have to have a financial um, plan going forward to make our state more accountable, more comprehensive, and really look at cuts as to how we can manage our state better. It's not just about tax and spending. You cannot tax and spend your way to prosperity. You have to have a budget just as if you had a budget in your own family.